has a hand up. Yep. You see that? Batsheva, you're on mute. Go ahead, Batsheva. I'm going to turn off screen. Screen. I'm going to turn off screen sharing. And let's go. Good evening, everyone. Let's go. Hi. Um, Hello. So, based because of my family, a lot of family, a difficult family situation, it was suggested that my daughter get like a mentor to spend time with her. Right. Like, like a girl. Um, is there any issue with that? I mean, um, you mean, should you be concerned? Yes. Um, is it part of an organization? You don't have to say the name. I'd rather you don't say the name, but is it part of an organization? Yeah, it would be recommended by an organization. So, so here's the, his having run a teen mentoring program for about 12 years. We had a few hundred you know, this was back in the day, um, you know, when there were very few agencies um, helping, you know, uh, families and kids like this. So we ran a team mentoring program. So I think the, the, should I tell you, you know, my heart wasn't in my throat all the time worrying about something, God forbid, the, you know, an unspeakable thing happening. I absolutely was. But what, what I would tell you to do is find out about the training and, you know, the same advice, by the way, if you're, you're sending your child to summer camp or day camp or school and you want to know if there's nothing wrong with you asking in a general way, what training do you offer your, your staff? Um, and if you ask a head counselor, for example, of a summer camp, if you're thinking of, uh, I know in New York there's a whole, you know, camps, no camps, whatever. But, uh, you know, if you're looking into a summer camp, I always tell parents, say, should I... I'm not sending my kid to camp. Everybody's abusing. I, I said, listen, you have to, you can't do this. You know, you kids have to live life, but you just have to be careful. So I tell parents to ask the head of the camp, what training do you give your staff? Um, what do you tell the, the children? Do you speak to the children that if they're uncomfortable, there's someone that they should go to? And that person should not be the head counselor. It should be usually somebody outside the, you know, outside the hierarchy of the, of the organization. Now that, that they could go to a leadership person, but they also should be able to go to somebody who's like outside there. And that's good practice is that they should say this, you know, on the first day when you have orientation with the children, you tell them, look, this is a safe place. If anybody feels uncomfortable, you can come to me, you can come to him, you can come to her, whatever. So if you ask the head of the camp and they say, what training do you do? And they say, oh, Baruch Hashem, we never have any trouble. <laughs> Folks, run for the hills, okay? So, so, but in your case, as far as the mentoring program goes, ask them how they're, they're trained, um, what's their policy. Um, I, mean, I know you're getting a favor from them, so you don't want to come across, you know, like, uh, like you're just busting their chops and you're just giving them a hard time. But these are fair questions. You know, what should I, um, what's your policy? What the, a good program has training, and it, usually there's a, um, a form that has to that, that they have to fill out every time they're w with the mentee they fill out a, a basic report and and the parents are involved in the, you know so it's a process i would i i would i certainly would not tell you to drop the mentor because you're afraid but you should find out as best you can what's going on how the program deals with this that would be my advice and if they don't have a training program and if they don't i would really uh, i'm not saying you should I'm not saying you should say no, you know, it's hard to take away what you can't replace, but I'm just saying, you know, I, I would be, I would be concerned if they don't have any training and supervision, both training at the beginning and supervision where they get to talk over uh, how it went. Did I answer your question? And when you mean is specifics about the training, if they talk about this, like if, are they making... Uh, I, look, I, I, I don't know if you can... If, they, if they're comfortable, if the organization says, you know, here's our training manual, that, that's great. If they uh -huh. don't, you say, look, you know, what, what do you speak to the... What, what, you, don't, you know, you don't even have to start with the abuse thing. You say, I just want to know, and, and like, what's your policy about confidentiality? If my, if my daughter talks to her mentor, um, and, and, I, and there's something I should be concerned about, should I be notified? Is there a strict rule that I'm not supposed to be notified? To so start there, that's a, a much more neutral way. So I, I, I'd like to know the rules of the road. In our organization, when Project Yes, when we did this, we used to have a meeting with, you know, a lot of people, they do it like, 
yeah, let's not, uh, you know, you don't want to make them uncomfortable that they're being mentored, let them meet in shul or they'll meet over there in the park or whatever. And like you, you have two sets of books, so to speak, you know, you don't uh-huh. make it clear what the, I'm sorry? You know what I'm no, saying? No, like, I'm it, like you don't make it clear what the rules of the road are. Like, and, and what we used to do is we, we, most of what we got, we got from Big Brothers, Big Sisters of New York and other organizations <laughs> that we, we studied. I actually hired somebody to spend a few months researching best practices before I was, I was terrified to do this. I wanted to do it because it needed to be done. Uh, but we actually, you know, they say if you, if you take someone's writing, it's plagiarism. If you take writing from many people, it's called research. <laughs> you know, so, so I had somebody do research for, for us. And, and, but but the, these are the best practices. Um, and, and, and like I said, if, if they're, they're, if the, the best setting, that's what the research shows, is that, not my research, you know, their research, um, that, that we used to have a meeting and we were in front of the child, the, the head of the program would be with the mentor and the mentee and the mentee's parents. And they would explain, here's how it's gonna work, you're gonna spend an hour together. Um, they would say some rules of the road and they would say, listen, if you wanna speak in confidence, then um, you, know, you can speak to your mentor in confidence and ask him not to tell the parents. Parents, are you okay? If you're not okay, tell us. Then it's not going to work, you know. So this, the best situation would be if there's this type of training, transparency, and and say they're in order. Okay. Anything else? Did I answer your question? Yes. Thank you so much. Okay. Good for you. Stay spunky. Good. good. Look it up. Go ahead. Anybody else, folks? Early night. I can go golfing. Uh, it's dark outside. Anything else, folks? She is that your hand? No golfing? It's too dark? Do you want to say something? Go ahead. Josh? You have to unmute yourself. Yeah. Go ahead. I think I did. Did I? Yeah, you did. did. Okay. Uh, My star student. Oh, shouldn't let you say that now. (laughs) (laughs) I'll let you know. I had a question question on the community assessment tool that, that Rebbe put on the screen before. So one of the one of the points was says to see if does your community report abusers or does abuse get reported to the authorities, whatever the exact wording was. So that could be something that might be difficult to know necessarily. How how would you say to could you elaborate a little bit more on what do you mean by that point exactly? How would you well, it, 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 right? So so it's it's really a culture thing, you know. Um, some schools do have. Like I said, there's a, there's a protocol. You know, the one I, the, the first one I, you know, uh, um, if any of you are interested in looking into this, you know, um, looking into, you know, getting protocols, there's some really good work being done. You know, the first, the first shul that I looked at their protocols was the Young Israel of Woodmere. You can look it up on, you know, they had one many, many years ago. Um, that Dr. Salomon was involved in, Avi Lauer from Yeshiva University, was, they were involved in drafting it for the shul. And there are very, very clear policies about training for the, for the staff, you know, for the youth groups and what, 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 what protocols are and what you do and what you don't do, who to go to if you're not like, they have a real protocol. So that's very clear. But in, in some communities, the culture is that it's kind of frowned upon to go to the authorities. Thank God it's much less than it used to be. Um, when I started working in this child safety space, it was like a big deal. You know, not everybody was, uh, a lot of folks were not comfortable reporting. Um, so, so I don't know, Yeshua, I don't know if there's a, Josh, if there's a sign up there that says, you know, reporting is us, you know, but, but you, you can kind of get a flavor for, for yeah, what the attitudes are. Speak to people in leadership if you're not sure. Say, what's the policy? You know, the, as the rabbi of Ashul, it's sad. Look, if I, uh, if, what, what do you think about, what's your policy on this? What are your thoughts about this? If you want to, but like some places there's, there, there, there's unfortunately, some, there still are vestiges of hostility when people come forward or the abuser, the abuser, the victim comes forward and nobody believes her or him. You know, so, so all of that ties into it. So again, Josh, that wasn't, it was more of a, you know, I wasn't writing only those things and it's not, you know, punching these numbers to a, it's just about getting a feel for it. A similar thing I did for this, if you look on my website, 
um, I, see, I, I believe in giving people the information to make the choice themselves. I, I was very upset at the time when I started dealing with teens at risk in 1997. So not you, you know. <laughs> yeah, me, and then, and then you realize. But, that's right. So, <laughs> so you know, p- uh, people were sending kids to yeshiva and Eretz, to Eretz Yisrael without, you know, uh, um, I thought without many situations without doing the diligence. And they were just like, you know, sending them to Israel because the guy around the block, you know, he was a wild kid. He was doing drugs. He went to Israel. The tzitzis came out, you know, and uh, he's stark and he's, you know, whatever. So, uh, you know, I made a, I was trying to convey this to parents, don't send all kids to Israel. So, I made an assessment for you. Click it on some website. I have a whole list to send you guys. Um, it's a way of thinking about. It's a way of thinking about this whole thing. So what I did is I made an assessment tool. I said, okay, yours, my son is a 16. 16 is five points. 17 is four points. You know, 20 is zero points. My kid has a learning disability. Ten more points. You know, the, the kid, my kid hates rules. You know, so all of the and you add it up at the end and you see. You know, if you're above a certain number, it's probably not going to work. Okay, so that's just an, that's how, this is how my mind works. Like, rather than you come to me, yes, Rabbi Horowitz, what do you think? You know, I would much rather let you know how I think, and you make this decision yourself. So I'm just giving you these attributes. Think to yourself, would an abuser be comfortable here? You know, um, Rabbi, Rabbi Lasser from, you know, from Yeshiva University, um, there was an abuser in his shul in Passaic. He actually asked me to, uh, uh, a woman in the community had a son, a child who was a registered sex offender. Rabbi Yaakov Glass, you know what I'm talking about, right? I know him you? very well. I work with him. Yeah, yeah. Send him my best, please. So he asked me to come speak to, so this, this, this guy was released from jail and he, he wound up coming home to his mother's house. He was an adult, but the, the place went into a panic. So he made, he, the first thing he did was he asked me to come down and speak to them to the parents. That's, right? That's sending a message, right? That's what I mean, Josh. So the rabbi is getting up and sending a message that, hey, we're going we're gonna to keep our eye on this. We're not going to drop the ball. And we'll, so that's a message. And what I found amazing, I was so moved when I heard about it. I heard from one of the people in the shul that this guy was told in no uncertain terms not to come to shul. He walked in while the rav was in the middle of Shema, Kriya Shema, of Meir, Friday night. And he interrupted his Kriya, his Shema, he stopped davening, went over to the guy and spoke to him in the middle of his own davening. He said, leave the shul now, you're not welcome here. You're a sex offender, you cannot be around children. That is a message to everybody. So I'm saying sometimes people give these messages to people who report, you know, and they make them uncomfortable. So it's, 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 it's the gestalt of it all. It's you, you look at it and you say, which components are here? Would a sex offender be comfortable here? Or would they say, this is not the place for me? Okay, that's really what it's about. Did I answer your question, sir? Yes. Now, I should do Excel, your wife's word, right? Exactly. <laughs> so, <laughs> it would be so meaningful if you just, you know, looked at the shul and thought about it. I'm just kidding. Okay, anybody else? Go ahead. Abish yes. Rand, Abish Rand has a question. Yes. Go, please. Abish, you have to unmute yourself. Can he? Oh, you unmuted him. I unmuted him. There we go. Yes. Hello. Hello. How are you? Baruch Hashem. So we have, we have what to catch up on, but right now I just wanted to thank you. Oh, Ma, just, hey, how are you doing? How are you? I don't see your picture here. Here, one second. Here we go. Let's get that started. Oh, okay. from Lytham. West <laughs> Coast? West Coast? Yeah, West Coast. Be careful. Watch the corona thing. Wear a mask. Yeah, seriously. I don't worry. I'm oh, by the way, you're sure, Josh. While we're at it, I know you're muted. It's okay, stay muted. It's fine. This, this, this. Your wife told me to say that. No, this mask here. You talk about culture. This mask. Okay. I'm not wearing a mask. I'm the only guy in the room right now. This is my culture. I walk around with this in my pocket. Okay, that's a message. I'm sending a message that I think anybody who tells people. Not to wear a mask is a madman. Because like, like Rebbe says, real men wear masks. Real, oh, you're right. That's, That's right. right. That's I right. had it before. What's her name there? You know, the, the Cheney's daughter. I had it first. Yeah. But, but this is, this, I'm sorry, Abish, I'll be with Rebbe Abish, I'll be with you in a second. That's right. But this, this is a culture thing. This is a culture thing. I'm sending a message here that I think people who don't wear masks are selfish. 
and, and hard, you know, depending on the situation, and people give advice that people shouldn't wear masks are, are, are it's a, an abomination. I think it's just a horrible, horrible thing. So this is my message. So it's a culture thing. I'm sending up a message. This is what I believe in. I believe real men wear masks. I'm not saying I'm a real man, but you know, I'm saying real men wear masks. So this, this is a culture thing. I'm sorry, Avish, go ahead, please. Yeah, I just wanted to say that after the first, I think it was the first or second session, where you talked about um, um, kids acting up, and someone mentioned, and someone mentioned something you had said years ago about about uh, um, kids from abused homes don't don't uh, don't fight. So I, I didn't say it exactly like that. Right. Yeah, but it's, there's less sibling rivalry. Right. Yeah, I'm saying well, that's I, I, Yeah, yeah. I'm, I know I'm misquoting it right now. I'm, right, I'm, right. Okay, I'm I just want to say right. I said that. I said that the research shows it doesn't mean they never do, but right. there's typically less sibling rivalry, not just abusive homes, in homes that Maslow would say their physical needs aren't taken care of, you know, or their, or their safety is not that secure. They don't have the comfort to, to quarrel. Or the other theory was that they're, they're um, the other theory is that they're, they're, um, the currency of their parents' love and attention isn't worth much. So there's not yeah. that that they're really fighting about. Oh, God, I'm sorry. Uh, so that, so that, yeah, no, 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 that's good. But the kids are that after hearing that discussion, especially what you're just saying, the currency of the parents is not so valuable. So I had been struggling with something with my kids because, um, so, so we're, whatever, not to <laughs> drop bombs, but I'm in the middle of, of, uh, of uh, a divorce. And, um, and my, uh, whenever I'm with my kids, I found that they were, it took them, they were just bickering and, 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 and shepherding and, and what is going on every time, you know, they switch, you know, parents or whatever. I didn't know, I don't know the other side, but when they were ever with me, I couldn't figure out like, what is, why are they going so crazy? And after that class, that's when, this is my, my, my shkayach, after that class, all of a sudden it hit me that they just want my attention. They just, they're just, they're just want to make sure that I'm still, you know, I'm still, you know, like, 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 uh, like, um, like yes, when, when Yitzchak, when Yitzchak said to Avramavi, you know, you know, and he says, Hineni Bini, right? He turns to his father and he says, are you still there? Are you still my father? Right, 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 right. Because, because he what? because he saw that he wanted to kill him on the bad Akeda. Yeah, yeah. Right, right. Yeah. So, so I, I just want to tell you that, you know, I've always felt, first of all, thank you for being courageous, you know, speaking, speaking about it. It's good. Um, I, I never felt that kids, I think I said this earlier in a session, you know, that, that, you know, obviously I'm a little biased because I, you know, I came from a blended family, but um, I, I don't think that to the extent, I don't think that kids are from blended families, divorced parents, or, you know, orphans. I, I don't think that like it's an automatic that they're going to be, God forbid, you know, maladjusted or anything. I think it has really has to do with the attitude of the parents, and um, you know I think kids from unhappy homes and stressful homes are are much more at risk. But you know I think I think there's a lot that parents can do to to be on top of it and understand, you know what they're what they're what they're going through and that 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 they need an exceptional amount of love. I had a. Um, one of the big Adolam in Muncie, one of the great leaders in Muncie, uh, a number of years ago, I did a talk for, for um, I did a talk for widows and divorcees and then divorced uh, women. And um, I, I interviewed, I, I interviewed a few people that raised great kids, you know, despite having been divorced or, or, or um, widowed. And um, I asked them what the best practices were. And one of them told me that, that a gadol, a great Torah scholar in Mansi, the Tamil Chacham, told them that she told her that she should play music in her house all the time, that it should be, have an upbeat, an upbeat tone. It was really, it was an extraordinary story. Um, he said that, see that your house is upbeat and play music. He says, you have my permission to play music during Svira and during the three weeks when we typically don't play music because the, the Jewish people are mourning in a, some, some sort of availus. He said, your house, 
has to be a happy place. So wow, thank you. That's yes, that's I'm, I'm sorry. No, that's Hashem. I like that. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was actually very, very interesting. I went over to interview this woman. All her children were married. She had a son who was in his 30s. And because of Yichud, you know, I said, just one of your kids. She said, one of my kids will be there. So he asked if he could sit at the table and listen to my interview. So when I asked the mom, what, what were your best practices? She told me this. And the kid perked up. Kid, he was 30 then. He said, um, mommy, was I in third grade when this happened? And she looked at him and she started counting. She says, yeah, why do you think that? She said, we all noticed that like the, the culture of the house changed very much. He didn't say, mom, it looks like you're taking happy pills. <laughs> but but that's, that was the, that, that's what he was really saying. And he said, we were talking about ourselves. We, never, we didn't really know why this happened. Now, in fairness, this, this Pamuk Chacham may have told it to her because she was too harsh with the kids. I don't know. Right. So just to be fair, he, what he told her is, this is what he said. He said, every, his quote was that every um, parents have to be a blend of din and rachamim, of judgment and mercy. Um, he said, Hash, he said, Hashem gave, he said, Hashem gave your family all the judgment they can handle. So it's your job to do just mercy. Wow. He, he said, Any, the kids can do anything they want. He said, no, but he said, ignore nine out of 10. That's what wow. he said. And he said, Thank you, that's... House, what? No, no, thank you. That's going to be really helpful. So, so, so that's, so I'm saying, so, and, and, and again, I, I want to be clear. I, I well, obviously wasn't going to ask her. She may have been particularly harsh with the kids, and maybe he heard something from one of the principals that said that, you know, came over to him and say, talk to her. I don't know. I, that's, I only know what I saw, what I heard. But the concept. The concept, the concept is that right, when you're in a situation, you'll see your children doing stuff like this. Okay. Thank you. I'm really, you. I'm honored and glad that you found it meaningful. Thanks. That, that Hakara, even just that Hakara, that that's where it was coming from, right, changed, to realize that, changed, right. the whole, changed the whole thing. And that's part right. of the so entropy, gone. right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Abish, Rav Abish, that's yeah. what you look for when you think yeah. of an answer key. You look around and you say, what's there and how can I in, figure this out? It, it, it doesn't make sense, but it makes sense somewhere. That's, that's yeah. how I'm encouraging all of you to think with everything. And hopefully you come to realization. Anyone else, folks? Okay, Siri Lamb, I'm um, muting you. My Zoom Rebbitson. Hi. Um, just you? a quick question. I, I asked work in a, a Zoom question today, just so you know. <laughs> um, ahead, I, I work in a modern Orthodox school, but I send my kids to more right wing schools. And the difference in all of those things where you talk about approach is so stark because I see the level of communication that goes to parents, I know the level of training that. I get and the way that it's enforced in the school that I get. And I guess my question is practically as a parent, what is it that I can do or that I can encourage my friends to do to try to shift the trend and almost in a, in a more um, like in a really relevant, like um, parallel that I've seen is even everybody's approach to COVID and the ways that my kids' schools approached it um, and, and the way that the school where I work you approaches mean like this? it. Exactly like that. Um, and, and, I, and I see the two almost being very similar. I don't know if it really is. And I just, again, I wonder practically what there is. Um, right. So, so can... you know, I, I, like, I, like I alluded to earlier, um, I think Ravalbo would say that if you want to make change, it should be organic, right? where rather than you walk in and say, you know, why aren't you doing this or that, try to do it more in a planting way than building and, and, and try to offer your help. And, you know, you might want to, I, I don't know if it'll go over well if you say, well, in my school, they do this. You can, don't have to say that, but you say, look, I know that there's some training out there. How can I be of help? I really would like that. That's what I found. I know as the school principal, that would have worked with me. If a parent comes in and starts, you know, just jawboning, then you, you just, you're a human being. You tend to just listen and be respectful. You answer respectfully. But 
that that's the best way to do it collaboratively as far as where you feel most comfortable and that's a very personal decision you know that 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 families have to make and and um that's that's just it i'm saying this it's it's if that's what you're noticing and that's how you're feeling ultimately you try to change as best you can and then you have to decide what's best for your family thank you i'm sorry i'm sorry i don't have anything wiser to say than that but but look i i i I have noticed, I've noticed change. If I can find something in 10 seconds, I'll show it to you. I've noticed change, meaningful change. Um, maybe I shouldn't do this while, uh, I wanna show you something. One of my trustees has this on the wall in his, in his office. Can you see this, folks? This is a picture of the principal of the Satmi Yeshiva reading our Yiddish child safety book to 350 students. I don't know if you can see it clearly enough. I went to Kiryas Yael, I went to Monroe when we started, we made a Yiddish copy of our safety book. I met with them and I said, look, I wanna make a book that's Matim for you. Um, it's not about me. You can make any changes you want. We had a wonderful conversation. I'm not saying we saw eye to eye on reporting or all the other things. I said, look, we need to protect the children. I have something that works. What can we do to make it work? They, they took a few thousand books from us. And this was six years ago. Mrs. Lamb, you there? I hear. I'm listening. So I'm saying I got Satma to do it you can probably do something also. I'm saying it, it was really, it was, an, and I, I thought about it a lot. Um, and I, I just, I went, you know, people tell me it's crazy. What are you doing? You're nuts. You're wasting your time, whatever. My friends stuff. I said, no, I'm going to give it, I'm going to give it a whirl. And I was sincere. I meant it. I, I, I said, look, it's not about me. You can change. You should see the two books. A few of my friends bought the, the two books, the change, you know, and we made it culturally congruent that it should look like, like a Satma family. And I did the same thing in Israel. We did it with the Datilumi community and with the Haredi community. Rebbe Kanievsky gives, Rebbe Kaledetsky, Rebbe Chaim's daughter, has, she has 500 books at a time we give her. She gives out books to everybody who comes. She's our biggest fan. So I'm saying you can, I don't think you should give up. I don't think you should give up. I think you should speak your truth nicely, politely, in a way that's, that's helpful. Don't give up. Thank you. Okay. Sure. But Bacheva has her hand raised. Okay, I think this is going to be the last one, folks. Go ahead, Bacheva, go. Hi, thank you for letting me. Um, a second question. That's because I'm so worried and not excelled that I didn't know how to raise my hands. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, you must know. Yeah, go ahead. Talk to Josh. Okay, so um, my, my question is another question about my daughter. Because of my, we had a very um, difficult life. Um, home circumstance, um, and she's very sensitive um, and shy, very bright though. And in terms of looking for a high school, like what are the things that I should zero in on and like as my priority and look away from? Like, like I know I'm supposed to, I should look for a place that's maybe smaller and more caring, and even if that comes with some kids that are not. I don't know, somehow it all ends up being with some girls that aren't as good unless Rabbi Harwich is opening a high school and, uh, you know. <laughs> Not in this lifetime. Not to the best of my knowledge. Um, okay. Look, I, I, I certainly can't, you know, I can't answer you specifically, but I do think you should look for a nurturing school. I think you should look, um, if it's a choice, what would Maslow say? What would Maslow say? What do you think Maslow would say? No, the first, the bottom two, the bottom right. two things, right? You think so? What? The bottom two parts have to be in place, right? Don't you the, think he would say that? Don't you think he would say that? You say, yeah, but over there, I'm they, saying the, bo the bottom parts have to be in place. She has to feel secure. She has to feel. Especially her, but I would say anybody, right? Right. And I, I think right. I, I, so. that's why I said, I'm telling you, Maslow's my Rebbe. 
I, I really, I, I look at something, I automatically think like him. One last story that I didn't say earlier because uh, there's a true story. It, it's a little, I don't know, funny is the right word, but um, somebody called me up. My mother was in the hospital six, or was in, it, was, it was seven, eight years ago. I didn't have, man, I didn't have the lowest level. I, was, I spent a few nights with my mother in the hospital, so I was pretty crutchy. I hadn't slept much. And um, this guy calls me up and he tells me that I'm good friends with him. And he tells me that his daughter, he just found out that his daughter who just came back from Israel was hanging out with, uh, was, was, was hanging out with a guy for 11th grade, 12th grade, the whole year in Israel for three years. Neither parent knew about it. He didn't know, his wife didn't know. And um, he said, my daughter said she's getting engaged to him. And I said over my dead body and, you know, whatever. So as I said, the guy's a nothing. He's a bum. He did it, whatever. whatever. He, he mouthed off a little bit. So I sent him, I'm, you know, I sent him a link to Maslow. I said, look, I'm with my mother right now. I said, you have an hour to look this over. I want you to study it like a toysvist, like a, you know, a commentary on the Talmud, together with your wife, and then I'll talk to you for a few minutes, and that's it. So he calls me back. He says, yeah, I saw that. He explains. He, I said, you know, yeah, but what is that to do? So I said, what did you tell your daughter again? He said, I told my daughter that, that you know, over my dead body, I'm never going to do it. So I said, Mazel Tov, when's the vart? I promise you, I told him. I said, Mazel Tov, when's the engagement party? So he says, engagement party? Did you hear what I said? There's not going to be an engagement party. This guy's in a... So I said, congratulations. I said, just, you know, let me know when the... So he says, what are you talking about? So I said, look at Maslow. I said, your daughter has a level of security with him because she wants to spend a life with him. And you're saying you have to give up the guy, give up a two, or you're going to lose your family, which is a three. So Maslow would say, she's not giving him up for you because her future is with her, with, is with her husband. And if you say, if you make it in such stark terms, she's going to walk away. Um, he said, yeah, she said something like that. And then I said, did you tell her that, you, did you put the guilt on that, you know, uh, next week I have a, a, a slide about, about what works better, you know, guilt or, or trying to, to work positively. So he said, I said, did you tell her that your Holocaust surviving grandmother is going to have a heart attack because of this and die or anything like that? And he says, yeah, well, not exactly those words, but, you know. So, so I said, it's a Beferish or Maslow. It's a, it's a, you know, Beferish is like, you know, written uh, succinctly. I said, Maslow would say that she's not giving up a two for a three. So he says, so what should I do? So I said, uh, so I said, why don't you tell her, listen, I don't know the kid yet. I never met him. I'm sure if you like him, he has very good qualities. So from now on, you're going to date him for six months. He comes in through the front door next time with a suit and a tie. And um, we'll get to know him. I swear to you, if everything goes well, we'll love him just like any other child of ours. And then you have a chance. Then you'll, you'll figure it out. Once you give her back the three and she doesn't have to fight for it, that was my take. So Maslow's everywhere. So I think that's how you think with your daughter in high school. I'm glad that you came to it on your own. Okay, folks? Okay. Thank I'll you. I'll see you next week. We have uh, Next week we're doing, we're doing literally a deep dive the bottom of the uh, the hidden part of the um, the hidden part of the uh, iceberg. Okay, it, 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 we're going to get a lot done next week. I hope you found this helpful. I'm trying to find a way. I know many of you reached out to me for follow up stuff. I, I I'm trying to do some digital way of cr creating some sort of forum that I probably would not give out to the public just for this group. So we could communicate with each other and, and, you know, I could be able to jump in and ask some questions. If any of you are familiar with electronics and, and I looked up some, some forums like that, I would love to be able to answer it in one place. Um, and like this, I can do it when I have a few free minutes. I could, so if anybody knows and is able to help, just drop me an email, please. Um, I would love to be able to set up something um, that we should be able to communicate. Because um, I, I unfortunately I apologize. I, I really can't do you know the rest of it. But everyone. Have a wonderful night. I'll see you in a week. Be well. Thank you again, Bela.